So one of the reasons I put the title of this is the new tax laws of what you need to know as an entrepreneur. And um, it's so important, but let's talk first of all, why is for the self-employed, for the entrepreneur, for the real estate agent, why are tax deductions so critical? They are critical because they save four taxes. Most four of us at taxes. least. taxes. Yes, four, four, four. Welcome to the Jennifer J. Hammond podcast. Jennifer is a licensed realtor, educator, speaker, and best-selling author. Jennifer's goal is to help you find your yay in every day. Linda, yay! Good morning. Linda, our amazing tax masters um, expert. She's our tax expert, but her the name of her company is Tax Masters. That is in Rockville, Maryland. And I'm so excited because... Um, Linda and I have known each other for many, many years. We've been through, oh my gosh, we've been on television together. We have, I think we were on ABC together. We have been on Sirius XM on my radio show numerous times. We've also been on many things together. And I'm just, and I'm so happy because I know your daughter too. And your daughter is amazing. She's international real estate. She owns a franchise down in Belize. So we've had her on, but Linda is the master for taxes, but you specialize in taxes for the entrepreneurs and specifically for real estate agents. And I know I've asked you this a million times, but it's still, it's always so important. Would you start with sharing a little bit about your story and how you became so in love? I think you're the only person I know who absolutely loves, loves, loves taxes. <laughs> That's right. It's because I started out working really hard like you. As a, as a realtor, I did commercial and, and, and industrial real estate. And that's really hard work. And what you do is even more difficult because it's residential. But at the same time, I was working part-time at H&R Block. I was still in college, actually. And found out that the three months a year that I did taxes, that was really fun and easy because taxes, you can control them. Whereas the other nine months a year when I was doing real estate, that's really, really hard. So as soon as I made enough money at real estate, because I used to sell office buildings and you only have to sell one or two a year and you make a lot of money. As soon as I put enough side on real estate, I decided I'm not going to do real estate anymore. I'm going to do taxes, but I'm going to specialize in real estate. And that's how I met you, Jennifer, because at the time, of course, you're a realtor and you're licensed in at least three jurisdictions that I know of, like Jennifer's all over the place. She's amazing. So that's my goal in life is to help people who are involved in real estate, whether they're, they're buyers, sellers, investors, entrepreneurs, mostly self-employed people. And um, that, that's, my, that's my, my whole life has been spent doing that. And I love it. And I know you also, you, and I'll just want to brag on you just for a minute. I know you also have had celebrities. You also do international taxes. You, I mean, so you really work for those of us who work for ourselves, the entrepreneurs and specializing with real estate. But again, the international side is something that a lot of times people just have no clue how to handle, especially if someone goes ahead and buys property somewhere else. So, oh my gosh. Um, you just have had, I mean, like, again, all the sports players you have, and you just had so many celebrities over the years. So you know how to help the humble real estate agent all the way up to the celebrities, right? That's right. And we've got clients in over 30 countries. And lots of them are involved in real estate because they bought real estate over there or businesses. And are, even some of them retired over there and they got tired of being retired. So they open businesses and most of them, a lot of them went into real estate. So it's all, it's all interconnected. That's my, 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 my favorite thing to work on. Well, and this is where I, where I want to start with entrepreneurs. We're kind of a unique breed of, uh, of people, you know, real estate investors, real estate agents, because we're, we work for ourselves. So one of the things that's really important, of course, is tax deductions. And so just because there might be someone not listening who doesn't understand, I want to talk about why a tax deduction is so important, how it can save somebody 
on so many different ways by having those tax deductions. So let's start with that basic principle because before we go into all the tax deductions and there's so many that are overlooked and I know there's some new ones. So one of the reasons I put the title of this is the new tax laws of what you need to know as an entrepreneur and um, it's so important, but let's talk first of all, why is for the self-employed, for the entrepreneur, for the real estate agent, why are tax deductions so critical? They are critical because they save four taxes. Most four of us at taxes. least- Four taxes! Yes, four, four, four. You know, if you have a personal deduction, personal deductions are very good. Personal deductions are things like money you've given to charity or the mortgage on your home, the interest on it anyway, and the real estate taxes on your home, the taxes you pay to the state you live in. You know, 40, 43 of the 50 states have a personal income tax. So those folks have good deductions. They're fine. They say federal and state tax. But when you're self-employed, who's your boss? You are. So that means you have to pay your own Social Security and Medicare tax which for everybody, everybody, the minute you make $400, it starts at 15.3%. Now, what happens is that that's added on top of the federal and state tax. So when you have a choice of whether having a business deduction, which saves you federal, state, social security, and Medicare, or just a personal deduction, which only saves you federal and state tax, you know, it's a choice, two or four, which is better? Four, you'd rather save four. So this is why it's critically important for uh, self-employed people to differentiate, or at least to know the difference between what would be just a plain personal deduction, which is good, but what's a business deduction, which is twice as good, if not even more than that. Because when you start adding up a federal tax rate, let's say you're in the 22% federal rate and you live in Maryland or DC and around here, our tax rate is 8%, goes up to 8.75 and you add 22 and eight, well, that's 30. And now you add the social security and Medicare, which is another 15.3. So that's, you're up to 45%. So do you wanna lose 45% of your income? No, you don't. No. And, and the way not to lose it is to have business deductions. And I think later on, you're gonna have me cover the three most overlooked business deductions Absolutely. for anybody who's self-employed. Doesn't matter, you could be a doctor, a lawyer, um, a painter, anybody who's self-employed is entitled to those four, uh, those four kinds of deductions on their business expenses. Which is huge. And that's where I want to start with that, because again, it's amazing how overlooked that is, that people don't realize that, you know, business deductions are so critical and understanding that. And so I do want to go to the, the three most overlooked, because that is critical. And again, it's amazing. I, and when I talk to people, sometimes they'll say, oh, I love my accountant or whatnot. And I'm like, okay, so I just want to ask you, and I always, that's my litmus test of, I ask, so I'm just curious, and I'll, I'll ask one of those three because I know them so well, because I know you, Linda. So let's go ahead and, um, but before we do that, I want to talk, let's talk a little bit about what's new in um, some of the tax deductions. I know that, you know, with all of the stuff that's happened with the pandemic, there are a lot of different, I want to say nuances, because there's always changes every year, right? I know you guys have to get updated every year on what's getting changed, but will you talk about the fact that um, some of the things that people should know as they're thinking about filing? Because right now we're in March of 2022. So if you're watching this at a different time, we always date ourselves when we talk about taxes because there's always something new or something that's changed. So right now we're in March of 2022 and what is new that people need to know? Well, for those who are self-employed, one of the biggest things is that Congress actually wanted to help the restaurant business because it suffered so much during the pandemic. It's still suffering, actually. Many of them have been closed, unfortunately. So what they did was they're allowing business meals to be 100% deductible. Now, in the past, they used to be 50% deductible, sometimes not deductible at all. Yeah. But this year, starting January of this year, 2022, you can deduct 100% of your business meals if they come from a restaurant or if they take place in a restaurant. So what this means is if you have a lady and she cooks a, a lovely dinner and invites people over and all of these people are her clients or prospective clients or referrals, uh, she serves the meal in her home, the food came from the grocery store. So that's a, it, it is a business meal, but it's not a deductible business meal. 
Whereas if she buys the food at a restaurant and then brings it home and serves it, then it is a deductible at 100%. Now, 100% deduction is saves you how much? Federal, state, Social Security, and Medicare. So this is very important to know. Now, it was allowed at 50% rate last year. So that meant that, let's say, last year you took some clients out to dinner. You had a lovely meal, a couple hundred dollars. So if you spent a 200, you were only allowed to deduct 100. But this year you spend 200, we're going to deduct 200. And like I say, if you have at least the 45% bracket, which most everybody who's self-employed does, that saves you $90. In other words, that $200 meal, when you file your tax return, the minute you sign your return, the internal revenue refunds to you by way of taxes, lower taxes, $90. So 200, the $200 meal only cost you $110. Oh, not bad. So this would be the year to entertain your clients. And, you know, restaurants also include bar bills. Many of our clients are single. And, you know, our single clients, they spend a lot more in bars usually than our married uh, clients. But in any case, bar bills, restaurant bills, and even if it's takeaway or bring home or delivery or whatever, you have that pizza you have delivered to your house and you've got friends over there. And maybe, maybe half the friends are personal and half of them are business. Well, then you can deduct half of the cost at the 100% rate. Does that make sense to you, Jennifer? Isn't that good? That's, and that's new this year, January, this year. That's new and that's great because obviously, as you said, the restaurant business and in Washington, D.C., we've seen it. I mean, it's just a... It's kind of it's it rips out your heart a little bit as you walk or as you walk or drive in Georgetown it's it's amazing as well but all over Washington DC we've seen restaurants just really didn't make it through the pandemic you know so many of them their pro profit margins were so thin and they didn't make it so it's nice to see that this is one of those ways that Congress has decided to help, especially to help the entrepreneurs, because we do, we, you know, the time of bringing somebody, I remember when I first got into, I can't believe I'm going to say this, 25 years ago, when I first got into real estate in Washington, D.C., it was rare that you had have a client meet you in some other place than your office. They traditionally would meet you in your office. Now, people all the time, if I'm signing a contract, if we're going over, you know, any other aspects of, of a home inspection or some kind of part of the contract, they always want to meet somewhere other than the office. They want to meet in a coffee shop or they want to at least go have lunch or, you know, whatever. But so we often are meeting somewhere else. And again, that is the expense that they assume the real estate agent, the, the entrepreneur will pick up the cost of all of that. So it's nice that Congress has not only supported the restaurants, but also is supporting with this kind of tax break, really supporting entrepreneurs for what we're doing. And again, because we're traditionally not in our office as much as we used to be. We have all of these <laughs> wonderful yeah, electronic and other means. And the salesman always pays. My third husband, he was wonderful. And uh, he was involved in sales. He, he dealt with coal mines and things like that. But I used to complain when the American Express bill came in, there's this huge, you know, we'd be going entertaining at the Palm and fancy restaurants in, in Century City or New York or Washington. And I said, you're spending too much money on entertainment. He said, you have to remember something. The salesman always pays. But, but this could be little things. You yep. know, Jennifer, how, how many times have you been out showing properties and it gets to be lunchtime or later than lunchtime? Yep. So you stop at Panera's yep. or you stop anywhere. Well, that's a restaurant. So now everything you spend at Panera's or wherever it is, that's deductible. And by the way, if you spend $75 or less, you don't even need to keep a receipt because for any business expense that's $75 or less on each occasion, you just need to write down the date you spent the money, the amount spent and the business reason. So let's say you're out and you didn't get the receipt or you're in a hurry, you could write down Panera's uh, business and business meeting or showing of property and the date and the amount that you spent. And if it's 75 or less, that's all you need. Now, of course, you want to make that notation in your iPhone or your some, somewhere on a piece of paper somewhere that you'll remember it at the end of the year. But that could be $75 once a week or twice a week, whatever it is, that's all deductible. And how much do you get back? Well, you're going to get back about 45% of that, whatever you spent. So it saves you so much money. I mean, if you just spent $90 of 
or let's say we spent $70 a week and divided that by half, that's $35. So you're saving $35 a week just by having one meal um, that you pay for for your clients. And you think about that $30 a week times, like just say 50 weeks, so not 52, just because you'll say you take two weeks off. That's a lot of money, a lot it, it, of money. It could be Starbucks too. When I, when I say restaurants, yeah. I mean eating establishments. So even if you just drop in and you get some lattes or mocha, mocha mix 2%, I don't know what they have, <laughs> whatever that is. And it's always less than $75 unless you're feeding a lot of people. So please keep that in mind because it's new this year and nobody knows what will happen next year. So we should take advantage, do lots of entertaining this year. So, and it's for, it wasn't for 21, it was only for 22. Is that what you're saying? That's right, that's right. For last okay. year, you were allowed to deduct 50% of your business meals, but this year it's 100%. Now, when I say something, when, when I say something's 100% deductible, that doesn't mean that you get back 100% on the tax return. It means that you get to deduct 100% of what you paid. And then it, the amount that it saves you depends on your federal bracket, your state bracket, and your social security and Medicare is always 15.3%, unless you make more than a couple of hundred thousand a year, and then it goes down to only 3%, 2.9. Yeah. So that's really important. Again, I appreciate you always going back to the basics like that, because so often I, I think we overlook um, the different ways that we can be looking at our expenses. And, and one of them as in real estate often is also staging, you know, with an open house, a lot of times we do the same thing. And even like you, when you come to the studio at Sirius XM, you would bring me muffins or you would bring, I should say, all my, my staff, <laughs> the producer and the board operator and all those folks. And those are tax, the business deductions as well. And I, I think that's a really important one. If you'll talk a little bit about some of the things I think that we forget, you know, but we're still spending that money in real estate on stuff like that staging um and, and oh, also wait. yeah bringing yes. food to an open house yes and absolutely i love when you mentioned staging because you know we do taxes for over 2,000 realtors probably 2200 realtors and we find that the ones who have expenses for staging percentage wise they make much more money than the, the realtors who don't do any staging. I think as a realtor myself, and I'm still a real estate broker, I'm not in competition with you. I, if I have any clients, I'll send them to Jennifer. But the, the realtors who do staging, they make so much more money percentage-wise because, it, well, just by staging the property, it makes it look more attractive. And uh, especially if it's empty, as you know, selling a property that's not empty is more difficult. I agree. I have an entire <laughs> online class about staging because I, it's amazing to me how many real estate agents resist it. And yet I'll tell you over and over again, we, we can show so many statistics on, you know, a house sells faster when it's not vacant and when you can stage it. And there's even virtual staging. There's always a way to do it. But as far in the virtual staging, again, is another business deduction, right? Yes, yes. But basically anything that you spend money on that helps you make more money is a business deduction. You know, unless it's something illegal, which we won't even go into. Okay, but here, it, I, it, I'm gonna go completely, let me give you a random, a, a totally random question, not real estate, but uh, my sister recently asked me this question and I was like, okay, I know I seem like the expert, but I am not the tax expert. We're gonna have to ask Linda. She's the tax expert. So she has a store on Etsy. And Etsy is her online business. And what she does is she has a lot of these beautiful antiques that she sells. She finds them in, you know, estate sales or yard sales or different places. And then she sells them. Well, she has to put her hand in there to hold things all the time. And then they take a photo and then it goes up on online. So manicure, manicure. manicure. Yes. <laughs> Yes. yes, because it's, it's necessary, because if she had an unmanicured hand, I'm sure her hand is very beautiful, but it looks better if it's manicured. Yes. That's, that's like an advertising expense, so absolutely deductible. Okay, absolutely. good. That's what yeah. I thought. So I'm going to tell her the good news. <laughs> yeah, and tell her to send me her website. I thought that was ah. interesting. Oh, my goodness. You have such oh. an interesting family. <laughs> I, love your, I, I love your brother that you share with me. 
and and your dad and and the sister too oh boy i got a bigger yeah. family now you're gonna love you'll love her edgy story it's all antiques it's really neat and uh, she does a lot of research on this stuff as well and um anyway so i'm sorry i digress but i wanted to, the reason i wanted to say that is because again i think so often people overlook all the different deductions that they can have and and i just think it's really important that number one you also made um a point that is also I think often overlooked and that's the is it 70 or $75 if you're if there is an expense that is you don't have a receipt for but it's under how much $75 or less and this could be many on one day for instance let's say Jennifer is going to do an open house this weekend and let's say the house is already vacant so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to stop at the grocery store and pick up some toilet paper because as yeah. we all know a vacant properties always need toilet paper i know and maybe and maybe some nice spray to make it smell good because it's been vacant for a while and maybe some windex because you want to clean the front windows make them look pretty so you have this long list of things you bought at the grocery store you know 90 percent of them are for your home but 10 percent of them are for your um open house so you just write down $60 open house expense groceries. So that's it. Now you get to the open house. Oh my gosh, the disaster of the yard and the, and the little, and the garage. So you have the little boy next door come over and you give him $50 and he mows the lawn or and today where right now it's snowing, he shovels the snow and, <laughs> and, and he cleans up the garage. So he doesn't have a receipt to give you. So you write down $50 boy next door, uh, clean up the, the open house. Okay. And that's it at the day. So now at the end of the day, you've spent $110. Can you deduct it? Yes, because each occasion, each item was 75 or less. So that $110, it's going to save you at least $50 income tax. So good grief. If you keep track of all of those, and this goes on for a year, um, I have one client who's a realtor. She gives the little boy next door $50 a week. And he comes over and he details her car and she likes to have her tires and wheels clean. And we deduct $50 a week, as you say, 50 weeks for her car expense, no receipts necessary. So it's really important because how many taxes does it save you? Come on, everybody here, pay attention. Yep, we should do that. Oh, and I'm going to take out my magic wand. This is a magic wand for anyone who's watching on YouTube. The magic wand is the wand that actually Linda brought me so that we can remember we would like to have taxes disappear. So we have a magic wand to help them disappear. And so for taxes. So knowing your business deductions is really critical being an entrepreneur, being a real estate agent, being a real estate investor, really understanding those. So I want to go over these three most overlooked tax deductions. Um, but we already have a question and I wanted to um, go ahead and honor Lily because I know everybody's you never know with Clubhouse, the people pop in the hot room and pop out of the room. So I see Lily, you've got your hand up. So I'm going to go ahead and bring you up to the stage. If you would like to ask a question, Lily, you got the floor. Would you like to ask a question to Linda? Yes, I, I would. And thank you for inviting me up. Um, recently, I turned one, I own a three family home. And recently I turned one of the apartments into a nurse B&B. This is the first time that I've done this. What I'd like to know is this, um, many times they ask us to create what is called a welcome book, right? Mm -hmm. And I've done so, but there are certain places that are nearby my property that I've never been to. I'd like to know if I visit those properties and then put them in the welcome book, would that be considered, my cost of admission to that place, would that be considered being tax deductible? I would think that would be a reasonable deduction because it sounds like something that's going to help you sell the property. And it's not something you're doing voluntarily. You might be visiting a sewing machine factory or something that you never would visit otherwise. Now, of course, if you have a meal there or something like that, maybe we wouldn't be able to cover that. But it's also possible if you took somebody with you for that meal, that it would become a business deduction because perhaps they're a possible referral. You know, in real estate, everybody is buying or selling a house or they know someone who's buying or selling a house or their possible referral, like I said. So with real estate, you have a lot more leeway than if you're, a, you know, let's say you're a doctor who's an orthopedic. Well, you're going to need to find someone who has a, a bone problem and that's your specific target. But with real estate, almost everybody is your target. 
So make sure your accountant is, is um, aware of all of these things, especially the new laws. And then of course the old laws too, because there's some laws that have been around for many years that a lot of accountants don't even know about. I teach accountants, so this is how I know that they don't know them. Yeah, and you teach continuing education for real estate agents in Washington, D.C., Virginia, and Maryland, because I'm licensed in all three. And mm -hmm. I am so happy because I love taking your class because they're always so funny and fun and enthusiastic. I mean, that's how I have the magic wand and you bring all sorts. That's the reason when I first met you, I thought, who in the world is this person who loves taxes and loves <laughs> teaching about taxes? And it just so, it warmed my heart so much because I love it when someone was that enthusiastic about what they do and I know it keeps you up at night. What's the new tax? What do we need to know? And even before this interview, what's the best things we can teach? What are the things that people need to know? And I, I love that, um, that now for 2022, we definitely can take all those business meetings and we can go back to restaurants. I think encouraging people to go back to restaurants is a beautiful thing. So Lily, do you have another question? That was a very good question, by the way. Never had that one before. No, that's perfect. Cla I, love, I saw you clapping. Thank you for clapping. And uh, thank you for being here. And definitely raise your hand again if you've got more questions. I'm going to go ahead and ask you one more question, um, Linda, about Airbnb, just because Airbnb is, um, I have had Airbnbs over the years. And I think it, it's one of those that, again, we're always looking for how can we, let's, so let's review quickly, because uh, I think for so many people, this will be a blessing. So Airbnb is, is short-term rentals. And there's all sorts of things that are unique about it, including the fact that you're constantly having to update things like light bulbs and toilet paper. And sometimes um, you're required to have shampoo and condiments. So you might have to, you know, mustard and ketchup in your refrigerator. And I used to love, like, I'm the person who always thought it would be so much fun, period, to have to own a hotel. So I used to always bring uh, a dozen eggs and um, coffee and tea, butter and milk, like the basics. So somebody could make breakfast and have coffee and tea um, when they come. And I can't tell you how many people told me, oh my gosh, my flight arrived so late and we didn't have our luggage or we didn't have blah, blah, blah. And being able to have the coffee and the tea and the milk. And of course, mm. toilet paper, paper towels, things that you don't really think about. But again, when you have an Airbnb, they're just like, they're gold for somebody who comes in. And I'm assuming every one of those is a business expense, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It greases the wheels. And this makes it easier for people to give you a really good rating. And which, of course, will bring you more business. And also, I'm sure if they come back to town, they're going to want to be at your location also. And, and you sound like the wonderful, wow, wow. I almost want to stay in your places. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have this addiction to uh, breakfast foods of making sure that people had this whole variety because as you know, one of my favorite places, I, I, I think we can say anything we want here. Trader Joe's has these amazing croissants, which, you know, I'm gluten-free now, so I don't eat the croissants, but you put them there from the freezer. So you take them out, you thaw them, and then you bake them and they rise and, oh, and muffins and all sorts of stuff. So now I just do eggs and milk and uh, coffee and tea, but... But still, all of that are tax deductions. Yeah. Absolutely. It makes your business more important and it gives you the good rating yeah. for future business. So exactly. You've, you've accomplished two things. And David was just saying, I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand, David. Yes, absolutely. You've got a question. So David has a question for you. Yeah, hi, hi Linda. David Randolph. Um, on short term rentals, following up with the expenses, um, is it a short term rental? isn't considered passive income, right? So the income from those are FICA taxable. Is that right? Is there, how, how do you handle the income from that versus a normal one year rental? Could you talk about the tax implications? She's going wild, David, you just wait. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's active income. Why is it active? Because first of all, it's short term. It's one week or less. That makes it short term. And also because you're providing certain services, perhaps towels or cleaning the laundry or uh, leaving supplies like Jennifer mentioned. So if you just have a, a home or a house or something or a business and you rent it out for one year at a time, that's, that's completely passive and it goes on schedule E like elephant and no problem. But the minute you do short-term rentals and you provide also a few little services, you don't have to, but you do, um, then it's considered active income and it doesn't go on schedule E, it goes on schedule C. 
Now, the difference between those two schedules basically is the fact that Schedule E is only subject to two taxes, federal and state, whereas the Schedule C income is active, it's working, it is subject to federal and state and Social Security and Medicare. So now you just graduated to a higher tax bracket and you're saying, oh, maybe that's not so good. It's going to be more tax. No, don't worry about it. Now you have more deductions because you can deduct driving back and forth to there. You can also use that income to put into what I'm going to talk about in a few minutes is your solo 401k retirement plan. So income from passive rental like that one year term is not is not allowed for uh, putting into a retirement plan. So, but if you have short-term income, that's active. It goes into a retirement plan if you want to. And that comes off the top of your income. So if you put any money into the retirement plan, but only the one that I like, only the qualified one, okay? Don't do those, don't do a SEP, don't do a Naira. No, 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 no. Only do the one I want you to do, which is the newest one at 20 years old. Then that one is going to save you the all the federal tax because for a dollar, every dollar you put into your solo 401k is fully deductible. Okay. Plus, there's a new deduction which I haven't even gotten to yet. It's called the 20% deduction. So for people who are um, self-employed of any kind, there's an automatic deduction of 20% of your net profit. Um, and sometimes that's allowed on, on rental income too, but you have to qualify it. But in any case, usually on rental income from normal long-term rentals, you usually show a loss anyway. But from profits from businesses, there's a 20% deduction and the retirement uh, a deduction if you want to make the retirement contribution. So very good question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so then would we use an S corporation for this then? Okay, you can use an S corporation. I always like to start out at least with an LLC. That's a limited liability company because that way, in case something goes wrong and you were to get sued, at least you've built a brick wall around your assets with an LLC. But, and then you can go from there and your accountant will tell you, don't ask a lawyer, ask an accountant. And I don't have anything against lawyers. My daughter's a lawyer. And, and the first thing she'll tell you is to talk to your accountant. Let your accountant decide if you're making enough money to warrant a, an S corporation. Usually if you're making less than 150,000 net in your pocket, then it's not really worth it. Because with a corporation, you have to do payroll, you have to hire yourself as an employee, which means you have payroll for yourself and anybody you hire, of course. And you have to do the bookkeeping, you have to do the payroll bookkeeping, you have to file a separate tax return, and it, it's, it's quite, quite a bit more expense and bookkeeping requirement. Whereas if you're just self-employed and you're just a plain little LLC, you still have the protection, but you don't have all the extra bookkeeping costs or requirements because it's, it's not just paying for the bookkeeping. It means you're required to keep the books and you're gonna have to pay someone to do it if you don't wanna do it yourself. So be careful with that one. I, I, like, I like schedule, um, I like LLCs, I like subchapter S's, but only for certain clients. Very good. David, was that helpful for you? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Linda. Awesome. Go. For the rest of the conversation, tune in for part two of this interview. Hi, I'm Jack Canfield. You may know me as the co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. And if you want more help in getting from where you are to where you want to be, I want to encourage you to listen to the Jennifer Hammond Show 